Welcome back to Dusting History. Got a great one today. This actually almost doesn't look real. This is Baldwin's latest airship and obviously back in the day you could buy a ticket for a ride in one of these things. I think it was a ride in that balloon that's parked behind the entrance there. So as usual I've cropped it down, I've just despotted some of the bigger problem areas, got rid of the um, borders in the corner with the remove tool and now using the curve tool as a layer I'm just trying to see what data there is. Is there any detail in the walls of the building? Is there any detail in the sky? What's worth keeping? That sort of stuff. So happy with that, I put another levels adjustment layer down and just equalize the image out a little bit more. And now this other one, which looks a little dark, I'm going to put a gradient in the bottom corner here on that dark adjustment. And now once the gradient's in, I can just darken off the edge there where that woman and the baby in the pram are just to get rid of some of that flashed, lifted, kind of gamut up kind of part of that image. All right, just playing with opacity now on those levels, just bringing them up and down and just fishing around for a, a consistent looking tone to the image. So before I start to try and filter it or sharpen the image, I'm going to duplicate that work and then merge those down into a single layer and then go to the Neural Filters tab and go to the Photo Restoration button there and see if I can get any sharpness or grain reduction in this image. As you can see, it's done a pretty good job of, of evening out some of the, the big grain in there. I'll duplicate that layer once more and go to Topaz Photo AI and see if I can do some further sharpening in there. Now it's really easy to over sharpen a picture like this. This is why I duplicate the layer so I can mix it back in Photoshop later if I want to. And that's exactly what I'll do here. I'll work around the image toggling on and off that sharpness just seeing if I think it's done anything good or bad and you can see the fine little ropes at the bottom of the blimp are kind of missing there. So I'm going to mask that out there so the Topaz stuff doesn't remove those pale little lines. But other than that, I think I'm pretty happy with the result. Now it may look like I'm collapsing this all down a lot, but I do actually save incrementally. I just don't uh, record all that. All right, so with the remove tool now, I can despot the image. There's not a ton of damage on it. It's actually in, in very good condition. I've been doing a few of these airship pictures and I've had somebody actually comment that they thought the images looked AI generated. <laughs> I think that's a testament to the fact that they're so outlandish looking to us now. Okay, so in palette.fm, I'm going to look at some different palettes and see if any of these artificially generated palettes actually help the image and, and help me with a, a baseline for colorization. I know a lot of people like to colorize from scratch and think that using AI is a bit of a cheat, but I really use it as a, as a starting point basically just to, to get me going. It loves making the, uh, the balloons or the blimps golden for some reason, golden or red. Oddly, I'm not assessing the color of the blimps here because I'm going to paint those later. What I'm looking at is its guesses on the distant mountain and also the ambient or indirect light on the buildings and the people. There's something to be said for the one that has the blue tone in the shadows because that's very natural. And I also like the kind of the blueingness of the foliage as it heads back into the distance there. Although it's very blue on one side of the American flag and not so blue on the other. So that's one of those things I'll paint and fix. So starting with a new layer set to color, I get painting.
time to silver up these balloons. I'm also doing that on a new layer just in case I do something stupid and I want to go back. And again, like I've said in other videos, you can see I'm not really colouring in super carefully. I'm actually uh, leaving some of that original reds and yellows and things to, to pop through. I actually like that idea that, that they're silvery and they're bouncing light around like a reflective sphere. That pole there that has got a yellow shadow uh, on the wall there so I'm gonna to have to paint that blue. See the guy at the ticket booth has got a great indirect blue in his shadow and it's got a little bit of warmth scattering in as well from the wall color and I think that's just fantastic. So that one guy's shadow became my guide for the rest of the, the shadow work on this. As well I've left some of that scatter of color in the distant mountain that sort of sense of rock and blue haze and green foliage is really really compelling. I like that distant building's got sort of a red awning there, so I'm going to re replicate that, duplicate it all the way along in between the windows. And then work back and make the eaves a consistent sort of tan colour. Again, letting some of that original blue scatter through. What it does is it makes you see that whole building as a, as a single building and not a collection of different coloured objects. Now obviously I need to address the American flags. A couple of last little touches and I think I'm good. So there's the original and my work. I hope you enjoyed that. It was great to have you along again. We'll see you next time. Thanks very much.